River. And the reason I stopped here at this sign is to look at it and tell you about the native. I'm an ethnobotanist. What an ethnobotanist is, is it talks about the, rela the relationship between people and plants. There's botanists, there are scientists. I am not a scientist. I'm an educator. I'm a teacher. I have a teacher cre credential, or used to have, as a health educator from UC Santa Cruz. And then I became an ethnobotanist from, UC from Chico State, and I became a master herbalist instructor from uh, the Global College of Natural Medicine. So I've got a lot of education so I can teach people and be okay and they can go, what's your credentials? Well, to tell you a little more about my personal story, the earliest recollections I have are when I was three years old, my great grandmother used to take me out in the woods and she actually brought me down here and told me that this was our ancestral ground, that our family lived here. And my grandmother took over after that and raised me learning about the plants. And one of the things I wanted to tell you, I'm a teacher, I'm an educator. Some people like to use the word medicine man. I am not a medicine man. I have no claim to being a medicine man and none of my family has ever been medicine people. Who my grandmother was in the 17 and 1800s was a basket weaver. She was just one of the Indians. So if anybody asks me what my heritage is, I'm just one of the Indians. I'm Norel Muck Wintu. That means I'm from Trinity County. If you look at where my grandmother's villages were in a place called Junction City, I'm Eltipom, Nompsus. I am not Norel Muck, but because that's the state recognized organ organization, I tell everybody I'm Norel Muck. There's other bands of Wintu people. There's the Winamum. The word Winnema means Middle River people. Those people are up the Sacramento River from the McLeod River down to the Sacramento River. And their territory stops, and then there's other Wintu people that come after that. Uh, we're on but the I'm, uh, edge as of officially, Creek I'm right now. And over here, there were thousands of people living on this uh, site where we are now. And this ground has always been flat, it's a floodplain. And if you look at a floodplain, usually they're flat. None of these trees were here except these big, big beautiful oak trees. Uh, this might be 400 years old, so it was here when the original people were here. Out here where we're looking, straight out here, uh, we're going to be putting a village site. And this is a fishing village right next to where uh, the Sulphur Creek is. And at some times of the year, there's little tiny fish coming down <laughs> Sulphur Creek. Because this is an elderberry. And right now it's sleeping because it's uh, no, or December. And so everything's sleeping. But we see a new shoot like this. I would take this shoot like this and cut it and see how nice and straight it is. I would probably cut it off right about here, up to about here and I would make fire with this. I would, uh, this is the number one bush for making fire. And I do have uh, calluses on my hands and I rub sticks together and elderberry is my most favorite fire making stick. And you see how nice and straight this is. Uh, these old ones, they're probably rotten inside and I wouldn't want to use those. So I cut them green, let them dry, and then use them. Another thing that you use the elderberry for is you get fat ones like this, and you can get them when they're dead or alive, it doesn't matter. Once they're dried out, you make a clapper stick, which is a musical instrument. And it's a stick maybe a foot and a half long, and the front part of it, like you would split it all the way down here so that you could use it, and then you would use the handhold here, and you would clap with it. And that's our number one musical instrument for all of the wind two people. Another thing that you do with this is uh, in the spring, this will have these beautiful white flowers. And uh, you can see the leaves of this, and it will be wonderful for making a tea out of for colds and for uh, helping your respiratory system. Uh, or you can wait until the berries turn purple and make a wonderful uh, uh, syrup or jelly or ferment it. 
This is the number one plant that we would ferment to make uh, a beverage out of, I'll call it. <laughs> okay, but we have whorehound here. Fantastic plant. Have you ever had whorehound candy? Uh, a lot of times when I bring the kids out, I'll let them taste this. And once I let them taste whorehound, can whorehound leaves, they don't want to mess with any other leaves because it's really nasty tasting. <laughs> if you mix it with honey and make a syrup out of this, it's supposed to be good for the throat. But even with a little bit of honey, I don't care for whorehound. So if you ever get one of these leaves and feel like going, I wonder what that tastes like, it will pucker your mouth up and you'll go, oh, that was nasty. <laughs> but most people know about whorehound candy. Uh, it takes a lot of honey to make this to where you, it's palatable.